Presenter number 11 from grouping two, the Humanities, Arts, Social Sciences, is Dr. Michael Theophilus from Australian Catholic University. His title is Oxyrhynchus, Recovering Lost Manuscripts from the Ancient World. When you're ready, Michael. There have been many advances in technology over the last 2,000 years. But one thing that hasn't changed is how we dump our rubbish in large landfills. Now, the ancient town dumps of Oxyrhynchus, this city in Egypt, didn't look impressive, just a series of mounds covered in drifting sand. But they provided the ideal conditions for the preservation of ancient manuscripts. That's mainly because there was no light, no air, and no water. Because of those conditions, they provided something that the classical sites of ancient Greece and Italy couldn't provide, the preservation of this stuff, papyrus. Uh, it's the ancient, ancient equivalent of paper made from the pith of Nile reed. Now, in 1910, over 500,000 fragments, 500,000 fragments were brought back to Oxford, uh, and these uh, fragments included an impressive variety of both literary texts, so things like Homer and Sappho and Euripides, Eumenides, and so on and so forth, as well as documentary texts, the texts of everyday life, tax returns, private letters, sales receipts, petitions, and so on. After 100 years of research, only 1% of those manuscripts have been published. That's partly because of the complexities of reconstructing so many fragmentary texts, and it's also because of the state of the manuscript themselves. Remember, these manuscripts are from rubbish dumps from 2,000 years ago, not from the pristine environment of an ancient library. So many of them are carbonised to uh, effectively being charcoal black. And this, of course, is a real problem uh, if you're going to read them or attempt to read them. So my ongoing research with the Oxyrhynchus papyri uh, is the recovery and the restoration and the reading and translation, of course, of these ancient manuscripts. The technique that we uh, have used is uh, called multispectral imaging, and this actually, believe it or not, is derived from NASA's imaging of the surface of Mars wherein a series of photographs or images are taken of the same scene compiled into what we refer to uh, as a, uh, an image block and then processed in a way to enhance the spectral reflectance or to exaggerate those differences uh, between the papyrus and the ink. So what does all that mean? Uh, well, each colour reflects light in a different spectrum on the... Well, well different... Uh, um, a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So red uh, writing with red and green with green, obviously. So with this writing example in the top right corner, if I use a, a green filter, what you'll see is the green writing almost disappears, but the red writing is enhanced. Uh, flip over to a red filter, the red writing almost disappears, and the green writing, uh, or the green text in this case, is enhanced. So this is an advanced application of a relatively simple principle, that is that colours emit different wavelengths of light. And so multispectral imaging exploits that reality. And the results speak for themselves. Have a look at this. This is a third century manuscript, St Paul's Epistle to the Romans. You go from something like that, which no matter how good your Greek is, you're not going to read it. Impossible. With the developments in multispectral, you can go to something like that. Again, another text which is completely charcoal toast, go from something like this to something like this. This is a brand new text which redefines our understanding of the variegated forms of early Christianity during this period. So, the results of this uh, research project are effectively uh, threefold. Number one, you have the recovery of lost texts, texts which otherwise would not be available uh, for us to read um, and consult. Now that includes both biblical texts as well as classical texts like the ones I mentioned earlier. You've also got the rewriting of history and that's fascinating. Not from the state-sponsored historians but from the documents of everyday life. Petitions, wills, tax receipts, etc. And finally you've got the, uh, you, you actually get a snapshot of textual transmission or information uh, transmission in progress. Um, and that, in many ways, uh, it, it enlightens our understanding of scribal practice, literacy, and all sorts of other uh, elements. So my research on these papyri bring to life the thoughts, 
and the ideas and the desires of people just like us, but that lived 2,000 plus years ago. And each piece of this puzzle, so to speak, is another fragment of our story and sheds some light on who we are and where we've come from. Thank you.